God's only Son adored. He holds the field victorious. The hordes of devils fill the Be seated. All are cordially invited to greet the family in uh, food and fellowship following this service in the gathering place behind the folding doors. Katie, Todd, Shelley, Michael, Lisa, grandchildren, friends, family. Today we celebrate and thank God for a man of music and a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. As I was remembering the band director, the charter member of the jazz arts group, the pit musician for so many plays and musicals, and the church choir director not only at two churches but including his 40 years here at Christ Church. I remembered words from an anthem that we often sang under El, an anthem entitled River in Judea. These words could easily describe something El might have done. And I quote, Oftentimes I dream of music, of the river that freely flows, and it sings a song sweeter than honey, one everybody knows. Late at night I hear it singing, then again when I wake at dawn, and it fills me up with hope and goodwill, the will to go on, to go on. Or another anthem we sang under El, Thy Will Be Done, with his good friend Fred Eisringhausen as soloist. And the words were these. Sometimes the load is heavy, and sometimes the road is long. And sometimes, Lord, this heart of mine is not so very strong. But thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. And I have no doubt that in his last such difficult days, he might have been thinking, and again I quote, Now, Lord, I feel you near me. I feel your guiding power and know you're standing by me through every passing hour. And thy will be done, Lord. Thy will 
be done. And then from still another anthem that Al directed here on Christmas Eve in 2011, I found magnificent words for all of us today. And those words are these. He left the music of heaven, songs of angels round the throne, to sing the song of his father, a melody of God's son alone. The center of all heaven's praises, king of all eternity, he left the music of heaven to sing the song of Calvary. Listen once again, hear the weary sky. A rugged cross upon a hill points to a darkened sky. For all who choose to hear, a precious melody rings out to offer human hearts a heavenly harmony. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory be to God on high. We remember a fine man of music today. And we also celebrate an even greater God whose resurrected son allows Al to leave the music of earth and join the music of heaven, singing Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest forever. And I think Al might share with us today the closing words from River in Judea, and they are these. May the time not be too distant when we meet again by the river, meet by the shore. Till then, dream of that wonderful day as we sing once more, as we sing once more. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are gathered today to worship, to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Alan, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Alan. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swathered up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we too are gathered to our heavenly home and in the company of all your saints. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The first reading from Holy Scripture for today comes from the prophet Isaiah, 
the 43rd chapter. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And then Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then reading from St. John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thus far, God's word.
Hello, uh, I'm Al Sun Todd. This is my brother Mike, and we want to thank everyone for joining us here today to honor my dad. And I know many of you traveled a long way to be with us, and we really, we really appreciate it. it means means so much. It would be really hard uh, and take more time than we have today to list all of Dad's many accomplishments. He was a wonderful and loving husband, father, and grandfather. He was a celebrated and highly respected music teacher, band and choir director, and bass player. I became one of his students at Walnut Ridge High School. I followed in his footsteps playing trombone in the marching and concert bands, and also bass guitar and jazz band. Dad had an intensity, an unwavering demand for perfection. It was both intimidating yet inspirational. He motivated his students to work hard and to arrive prepared for rehearsals, as mediocrity was never accepted. Those that dared to show up unprepared did so at their own peril, <laughs> as his masterful ear could pick out a weak link, which would often result in the offender being called out to stand up and play his part in front of the whole band. <laughs> There's a reason his bands were awarded so many top honors year after year at state contests. <clears throat> a few years ago, many of his former students from 60s, 70s, even in the early 80s, got together, uh, sent him a bunch of cards uh, for his birthday, 80th birthday, but also just to thank him. Uh, Mom recently shared them with me, and it was a pretty good sized bag full of letters, cards, and um, very, very touching. Um, you know, you always knew he had an impact, but to, to read just how much he, he meant to them it was, just, it was just incredible. Um, I'd like to read a, a quick excerpt from one student who was inspired enough by dad to become a teacher as well. <clears throat> You've had a huge impact on my life. Every minute I spent in one of your rehearsals or theory class led me to my life's work. You lit the fire. You opened the doors. I can't begin to fathom where I would have been in life without your influence. Thank you, sir. And letter after letter echoed these same sentiments. <clears throat> His high expectations and drive for excellence carried on here at Christ Church. Mike and I were fortunate enough to join on a few occasions, most notably for the Foray Requiem, which is an experience I'll never forget. You could sense the obvious admiration and respect the choir had for Dad. And most seemed to enjoy his classic dry quips. He was also an accomplished songwriter and arranger. He composed the Walnut Ridge High School Marching Band Fight Song. And he also made several of his own arrangements for popular songs of the day, writing out all the various instrument parts himself. I have such fond memories of watching Dad play bass, both with the jazz arts group and gigging with his band with uh, Rick Monroe. I actually started playing bass guitar in junior high. Uh, they had a vacancy, so I filled it. But it quickly became a passion and an obsession for me. And I've always and will always be thankful to Dad for providing an inspiration and the musical skills I was fortunate to inherit. Dad was also uh, quite the handy craftsman. He uh, built all these custom shelving in our house and um, just helped me with so many various projects over the years. I'm not handy at all. And he, he, I got a little bit, just a little bit of what he, what he could do. And, and it's just, I appreciate it more as I get older. Um, just, again, perfect with what he did. Just fine details, just, I mean, I don't do that. <laughs> But I respect him. Um, at one time, he spent, a, oh gosh, so many times, weeks with Shelly, my wife, putting all the crown molding around our whole uh, first floor. And uh, it, it was just amazing. You know, the, the next Christmas after that, 
He bought Shelly an air compressor and nail gun. <laughs> My gift was a frying pan. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> uh, Dad loved his family, especially our mom. She was truly the most important part of his life. They were able to travel the world, both with friends and also through music. We have so many fond childhood memories of camping in the Hocking Hills, summer trips to a lake cabin down in South Carolina. We had several family vacations with Mike's family, our family, at Outer Banks and Hilton Head, just, just wonderful memories. He loved his granddaughters. When he was younger, he would take the girls to hike up the mountain, mountain at Rising Park in Lancaster. Which it was only about 100 yards from where he grew up. And they would have special days where dad would take them out shopping and for dinner and it was special. He loved our wives, Shelly and Lisa. Sometimes I think maybe even a bit more than Mike and I. <laughs> dad and I have been very close friends for a long time. But there was a time when I was younger that we would butt heads, natural stuff. But uh, many of you may recall I had a little bit more hair when I was younger. Dad never liked my long hair, didn't seem to kind of see eye to eye with that. He would also often refer to me as the daughter he never had. <laughs> and eventually he started bribing me like, oh, how about 500 bucks? It was a thousand, I mean, he went on and on. I was like, finally I just, I, I had enough. I said, Dad, I think you might just be a little jealous. And he let it go after that. I feel so grateful to have had as much time as I did with dad. He instilled in me strength, integrity, and perseverance. He set an example that honor and character are to be valued above all. I miss him so much already, and I will just always cherish our memories. The world's a better place because dad was here, and he'll be dearly missed. Thanks, everyone, for coming today again to celebrate his uh, life and legacy. Um, I also, uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone uh, for being here to celebrate Al's life, um, and it was a, what a life he had. Uh, he uh, had really everything you'd want to get out of a life, right? He had a partner in my mom, 61 years of marriage, uh, so many, um, the respect and love of his sons, of his daughters-in-law, and his cherished uh, grandchildren, respect of his peers, and um, you know, so many passions, right? The teaching, the directing, he was, played music, he played golf, and he got so much out of all those things. Like any true golfer, he never got as much out of his golf game as he would want, but uh, uh, he, he, uh, he, he lived a full life. Um, and when I think about our relationship with him, you know, the great dad doesn't co cover it. As Todd said, over the last 30 years, the majority of our, our lives, he's been a good friend just countless rounds of golf or golf trips or beach vacations or new restaurants. He, was, he, was, he became such a foodie. He would, he would get so excited when he'd get a new restaurant. He wanted to take everyone there. Um, and just uh, kind of sorely missed my friend. That smile, that laugh, just, just him. But before we were more like buddies, there were years of Al's discipline. And uh, he, you know, growing up, he was, he was fairly tough, but always fair. And um, the last sort of major act of discipline I remember with him was early in my time at Ohio State. This would have been um, fall 86, and at this point, he was uh, director of music, or instrumental music for Columbus Public Schools. Um, and I, I don't recall exactly what happened, but there was some sort of notice, not a good report, 
about me that went directly to their house. And so um, one morning, I knock at the door of my campus apartment, and I open it, and there's Al. And he's in full Al professional presentation. He's got the tan trench coat, the, the sport coat, the tie, and he used to wear these big Secret Service shades. And it's like the FBI was at the door, and uh, he was not smiling. So he simply said, let you and I take a ride. <laughs> like the mafia. Yeah. yeah. So I get into the car for what had to be the most uncomfortable 15-minute car ride of my life. And uh, I, I, I came back out of there with my tail fully between my legs, and uh, let's just say that my uh, grades picked up from there. <laughs> um, but uh, of all the accomplishments that you know everyone's aware of, I think that the, what he did at Walnut Ridge to me is just, is, uh, stands out. Um, you know, he went there right out of college, a sort of newly opened school, and um, he was able to build up this great this powerhouse uh, program. A lot of people that helped in that, but um, he did amazing things there. And uh, uh, when you think about um, what it meant to so many people. All the comments these past two days are such reminders of all that. Uh, so, and Todd and I, you know, we're fortunate enough to be some of those students, so we got to experience that as well. And I, I was fortunate enough to go on to Ohio State, and I made the concert band there. It's a great band, had professional, what we're gonna be professional musicians in it, and a nationally recognized director, and he was great. But Dad had every bit of the command of the score, the body language, the arm movement, the, the facial expressions, the eyes telling you what he wanted, right? Um, it was just fantastic, it was a lead. I mean, the, the picture that we chose for his obituary, it just says all of that, right? He's got his fist out, he's like, come on, let me hear it, you know? Yeah. We love that, uh, that picture. He was just an, an, an elite, uh, a director and you know to being on the receiving end of that as a player or as a singer and a lot of people in this room were there it's it's uh, it's an awesome feeling that passion and energy that you're getting it's a it's a special special connection um, I think that one word that people would not use to describe dad particularly during his career was uh, f flexible um, <laughs> And, you know, one example of that from our youth was in the Berry House, when you got to the fourth grade, it was time to choose your instrument. Not whether you were going to play an instrument, but what instrument you were going to play. So I got to the fourth grade, and he comes to me and said, Mike, what instrument do you want to play? I want to play the drums. And he said, how about the clarinet? <laughs> and so the clarinet it was. I, I ended up having great times from having done it, uh, but uh, that was a, that's a memorable, a memorable day. Um, and then the practice. Didn't mess around with a commitment to practice. Mm -hmm. it was half an hour to an hour a day, five days a week. And sometimes he'd be out in the family room and he'd be listening to you and you'd hear flat or sharp if you missed a note. <laughs> and um, over the years that got a little tiring. So. <laughs> As a teenager, you'd throw in the intentional every once in a while, occasionally, <laughs> wrong notes. And you're like, take that sharp, you know? <laughs> but uh, uh, you had to be careful. You had to be careful occasionally, right? Yeah, yeah. This is one bear you had to be careful not to poke. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, also his partnership with mom, um, you know, in terms of flexibility, let's just say he... He probably made a lot of day-to-day -day family decisions, but when Katie put her foot down, that was the last word. Make no mistake about it, he adored her, adored her. And uh, I mean, I was also very happy for him to enjoy so many years of retirement. Uh, I think when he was able to retire, um, it, it just seemed like he was, something had been lifted. He was able to really relax and enjoy Oh, you know, 25 years of retirement with being able to see his granddaughters uh, grow up, being able to take great trips, um, you know, continuing to play golf, continuing with the church choir, with the jazz arts group for a number of years. I was so happy for him uh, to, to have all that enjoyment. He did the vaudevillities for eight years. Um, so 
while our lives will uh, never be as full uh, without him, he had a great one. Um, when he passed, someone said, well, he'll, uh, he'll be singing with the angels now, and then someone else responded, no, no, he'll be directing them. <laughs> Very good. Which I thought was perfect. Um, so may he rest in peace. May God bless him and keep him. And again, thank you all for being here and the wonderful music he would have loved. Thank you. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. Katie, Todd, Shelley, Michael, Lisa, Ashley, Sarah, Olivia, Emma, and Charlotte, please know that you are surrounded this day and for all these past days by the love and support of so very, very many people. And you have our love and support for the days ahead as well. Six or seven weeks ago, if someone had asked you what your plans were for Saturday, January 13th, 2024, my guess is that you, more like each one of us, would not have answered that we would be here doing this. No way, no how. But here we are, against our will in some ways, wishing that we could be somewhere else, doing something else. And yet, what we do here today has eternal significance. Eternal significance. Because days like today remind us of what's really important, what's truly important, and what's what is truly trivial, on the other hand. 
what is truly eternal and what is here today and gone and forgotten tomorrow. So with that in the forefront of our minds and hearts, the first thing we do is celebrate the life of Al Berry. And, and Mike and Todd, what, what a great reflection and thoughts on your dad, our friend. What a wonderful man Al was and still is and always will be to us. Um, and by the way, Todd, your long hair, you know, when, when I met with your mom last week, after the, the, you know, the trifold board that you might have seen there in the gathering place and the family picture, I had to, who is that? I didn't know you guys had a daughter, just like, you know, Alan said, but I didn't. No, no, that's, that's Todd. That's Todd. You know, it does remind me of the story, the story of a, of a boy who's turning 16, and he had real long hair like you had, and he said to his dad, Dad, can I have a car for my birthday? And his dad said, I tell you what, son, I'll get you a car when you get your hair cut. So the, the boy went back. He was thinking about what, what in the world he was going to do, and finally he came to, back to his dad. He said, you know, Dad, Jesus had long hair. And his dad said, yeah, well, Jesus walked wherever he went. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking while you were saying. I said, I've got to get that out before I forget it. <laughs> he probably would have said that to you, too. I think so. You know, Scripture tells us that each one of us has, each one of us have been given gifts for life. Each one of us have been given gifts, more than one. Uh, in all cases, but he's given us gifts for life. Maybe it's a gift for math. Maybe it's a gift for speaking. Maybe it's a, the gift of mercy for others, just that kind of heart. Or, or maybe the working with your hands, which was another gift that your dad had. Some of us are creative. Some of us are deep thinkers. Some of us are encouragers, compassionate. Some of us are athletic. Some of us are intellectuals. But of all the gifts that have ever been given... The gift that I personally would love to have is the gift of music. The gift of music. My parents had the gift of music. My mom discovered, much to her dismay, that gifts sometimes skip generations. <laughs> and as hard as she tried to get my sister and myself to be musical, it just wasn't in us. But I would love to have it. It's like God stopped off at Al, though, and said, Here, Al, here's a boatload of musical talent for you. And he dumped it on Al's head and said, Let's see what you can do with this, with this gift. I want you to have fun. I want you to make a difference. And I want you to bring me glory. And by golly, if your grandpa didn't do all three, he did all three. Katie, you shared with me the, the uh, experience of, of music class, class at Capitol. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't get the name of the class, but, but it was like music theory. Yeah, yeah. And, and Professor Maud Oakes was a professor. I hear, how many of you remember Maud? Oh, yeah, there are a few of you who remember her. And she would play, the class was she would play notes you know, like a series, you know, whatever. And then the students would have to write down the musical notation of whatever she played just by ear. And Katie, you were in the class. You were not one of her favorites. <laughs> Al was in the class, and he was the golden boy, right? She really liked him. But whenever that would happen, she'd say, write it down, and you'd all be writing down, and Al would and then take his pencil, and put it down on his desk and look around at everybody else <laughs> who's still trying to figure it out. And then he'd look over at Katie and he'd wink at her because she was right across the aisle. You said that. Don't try to get away from it. You said that. I got it down. So sure enough, Al did all three, right? I mean, all the bands he was part of, Ray Root Band, the Rick Monroe Quartet, Jerry K. Orchestra, bands, vaudevillities, Columbus Jazz Orchestra. He had fun. I, maybe this is a dangerous thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
For those of you who spent time with Al in a band or one of his gigs or whatnot, will you please stand? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being here and for sharing, sharing his life in a very important way. So, and you probably have all kinds of stories. You're, you're, you're the ones to talk to afterwards, I know. He had fun. He made a difference too, right? Al made a huge difference. Mike and Todd, you mentioned it already. Hundreds of students over his, his, his 35 years, I can't imagine the number, sharing his gift and love for music with them. And many of his students coming back to say what an effect and indifference he made in their lives. And it's not just about music, right? It's about life stuff. It's about life. It, it, we kind of joke about his, his lack of flexibility, although I have to tell you, in my years of working with him here at Christ Church, he was real flexible. He'd come into the office and say, so what do you want to do? Are you jealous <laughs> that he didn't do that when you were kids? Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about this, and I'm like, well, you're fine to me. He was flexible. But what a difference. Stand up, if you will, if you were a student at any point in time of ours. Wow. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You know, by the way, I'm glad I was not in the band. He w I graduated from Bexley in 78, so I would have been in that, in that time period because my director said to me about my trombone playing, that he had heard better sounds coming out of the men's restroom. So <laughs> my guess is it was a good thing I was not part of that. The third thing, he brought glory to God's name. Al brought glory to God's name. 15 years as choir director at Shady Lane Church, 40 years as choir director here at Christ Lutheran Church, planning worship services for us, leading the choir and congregation and singing praises and thanks to the Lord, you know, expressing our faith in music. By the way, I don't know if you've ever done this, but take a look at Scripture and, and look at all the places in Scripture that lift up the beauty and importance of music and song because music and song lift us beyond ourselves. And the Lord is always saying, lift up to me your hymns and anthems of praise. The psalms, the psalms that we read are the lyrics for all the hymns that the ancient Hebrews would sing in worship. We don't have the music notation anymore, but we have the lyrics and words, and you can imagine the beauty of all that. But I decided to jump in and, and, and do a little, little digging and looking, and, and th this is what all the, the references that scripture has about music. Music is used in scripture in farewells, in entertainments, weddings, funerals, sacred processions, victory celebrations, coronation services, dedication services. Here are a list of instruments in the Bible. Castanets. That's what we're missing today. <laughs> we need castanets. There you go. The horn. Yep. Cymbals. Bagpipes. Did you know they had bagpipes in scripture? That's pretty cool. Psalteries, harps, pipes, flutes, lyres, the trigon. Anybody know what a trigon was? T-R-I-G-O-N? It sounds like an instrument of torture, but trigons, timbrels, trumpet, complete orchestras, all in scripture. Music is a big deal. And Al led us in, in the worship of our Lord in that way. But you know, Al's life was not just about music. His life was about this beautiful family. This beautiful family whom he loved deeply and dearly. Katie, you were the love of Al's life, 61 years. You're only 59. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> 61 years. Who gets the gold star, Katie? You or Al? for 61 years. Okay, we'll give you both the gold star. Right, right. And I can't begin to imagine the memories that you have and you share in your heart uh, and that you will hold dearly 
for forever. And I, I, one of my favorite pictures still is you and Al smooching on the beach at Miami Beach when you were in college. What is it, you told your parents you needed $100? hundred dollars you were going to go on a trip to Miami Beach you both were in college and and hundred dollars covered everything for the weekend and there the whole week the whole week in Miami Beach it's a great picture yeah great picture Michael Todd obviously as you shared with us memories of growing up the ups and downs of a father and son relationship along the way the one story you didn't share uh, it was a story of the spring break when your dad put you into forced labor. You were talking about that last night. You guys were doing some remodeling, and you were working with insulation and rewiring and all that kind of stuff. And he was a real taskmaster. He wouldn't let you get away. And he gave you a break, which was probably his first mistake. And during the break, you hid Todd in the back seat of the family car in the garage. In the garage. Yep, in the garage. You pulled a blanket over your head and a pillow over your head, and then. Your dad came up to Michael and said, Michael, where's your brother? Where's your brother? And I was meaning to ask you, and I didn't last night, did you ever give away where Todd was, Mike? Oh, you didn't know either. Oh, yeah, so it was a real mystery. It was a real mystery. I love that. Grandkids, grandchildren, he loved you dearly. You were the light of his life. Ashley, Sarah, Olivia, Emma, Charlotte. Family vacations at Hilton Head and the Outer Banks. Singing the 12 Days of Christmas. I've got, I, I, Will, you said you've got a video of that? I'd like to see that video someday. Every, every Christmas, the family would get together and sing the 12 Days of Christmas. And there's a relative who would actually call in. And his role was to sing which day? The 12th day. So he would sing it over the phone and everybody else would sing through the 12 days. Your grandpa setting up the train set for you girls every Christmas. And that was no easy thing. We think setting up a train set, but you have to bring in plywood. And it was partly uh, uh, Al's dad's train set, and then Al added to it. So it took him like a week to set it up. But uh, for as long as, as the girls were young and interested in that, he would set it up, and they'd play with that together. Patiently teaching you girls how to play songs on the piano and other things along the way. These memories and a million, million more. For you, for us as Al's friends and colleagues and students, Highlander Golf Club, his golfing experience. The bartender's name there was Barbie, right? Barbie, and she called Al Blondie. <laughs> this was back in the blonde days. Blondie, right? He had the looks of Jack Nicholas, Johnny Miller, and John Cook kind of wrapped up into one. And then, Katie, you added another personality to the list. You said Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> His old hairstyle. That's harsh, isn't it? See, I wouldn't have said that unless it was a quote from Katie. And, and, you know, yeah, so, so think of it so th uh, Jack Nicholas, Johnny Miller, John Cook, Captain Kangaroo. And every once in a while, he behaved like Jack Nicholson. That's a combination for you. That's, that's a combination for you. Guest trumpet player with the Columbus Jazz Orchestra, Clark Terry, gave Al the nickname Bass Face. Bass Face, which is still his, was his Facebook and, and all that. All those wonderful memories and more. And we could go up and down the aisle and the crossway in the pew sharing all kinds of things moments with Al, um, your friend, our friend, your dad, your grandpa, your beloved husband. And all of that is worth celebrating. All of that is more than worth celebrating. But what makes today a celebration isn't just about everything Al Berry did, it's about who Al Berry was and is, a child of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we celebrate today. Because today is, is about even more. It's about celebrating God's love for Al and Al's love for the Lord. And that, my friends, is where the rubber hits the road. For Al, for you, and for me. And if we look at Scripture, Scripture is full of promises from God to Al and to us. 
So that in 1 Thessalonians, for example, th the church at Thessalonica, they were kind of, they were confused because they expected Jesus to come back by the end of the week. You know, we had Easter, he's risen again, he leaves after the ascension, and then when's he coming back? He's coming right back. But a year passed, and five years passed, and ten years passed, fifteen years passed, and the folks at Thessalonica, the Christians, wrote to Paul and said, Paul, we've had a lot of our loved ones pass away in these years since Jesus left. What, what's the deal? What's, what's going on with them? And Paul said, oh, they're with the Lord. That's when he termed the co or coined the term asleep in the Lord. Not dying, but being asleep in the Lord. And he says this. He says, we, we do not mourn as those who have no hope. We do not mourn as those who have no hope. In other words, we can celebrate. We can celebrate the verses that we shared today. Isaiah chapter 43. Shared that with Al and Katie a, a, a number of times over these last weeks. Al, I've called you by name, God said, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The rivers won't overflow you. The fire will not burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, and I love you. And you could fill your name in with that same passage. Katie, I've called you by name. Todd, I've called you by name. What a wonderful promise. Al knew that promise. Psalm 23. You know, we think of Psalm 23, and the first thing we think of is what? Funerals. But Psalm 23 is not just a funeral psalm. It's a psalm for every single day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't need anything else. He makes me lie down with green pastures, leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. It's our lifeline for every day. And Al knew that. John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. Romans 8, we didn't read. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Not height, depth, not danger, not peril, not sword, not sickness, not anything. Deuteronomy 33, 27. I love this. The eternal God is a refuge, and underneath us are his everlasting arms. If you've ever thought of life as a tightrope, which it is, by the way, we're balancing, trying to stay on this thing we call life. But if we fall, his arms are underneath us. Or not if we fall, when we fall, because we do. You know why today is a celebration? Because we do not say goodbye to Al Berry. We say so long for now. Because in all of this, God in Christ Jesus has the last word. His death on the cross, his resurrection on the third day, tell us so. You know, of all the songs that Al could have chosen for today, of all the songs that could have been his favorites that he would want us to share together, on this day in other words his statement of faith what does he want us to hear in other words Al Berry's favorites were a mighty fortress Katie's favorite born and cry amazing grace and my hope is built on nothing less for you see God's promises were and are music to Al's ears music to our ears. Al Berry's life was music to our ears. Al's life was music to God's ears. May your life and mine be music to one another's ears and to God's ears too. So we give thanks to God for Al Berry and we commend him to God's loving arms, the place he's always been and always will be. Amen.
Almighty God, in holy baptism you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nothing will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we as those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us commend Alan to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Alan. And acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in God's peace. In the name of Christ, amen. the 
Spirit bow we and adore on our way rejoicing on our way rejoicing as we forward move hearken to our praises oh blessed God our 